On today's show, I'll open with why the Miami Heat are prioritizing a Kevin Durant trade over a Donovan Mitchell one and where a lot of Heat fans make a mistake when trying to figure out this front office. Plus, I'll get into some stuff on Tyler Hero, including the latest on his extension and his revealed 2K rating. Uh, finally, why the Heat missed out on yet another potential starter at Power Forward. All of that and more coming up next. Our Locked On Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on all things Miami Heat. However, you may be tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or on your favorite podcast app, thank you so much for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. I'm Wes Goldberg, not joined by my usual co-host, David Ramil, today uh, with an excused absence, David is. So I will be going solo, and I'll get into uh, Tali Hero's extension and why the Heat missed out on Jamichael Green in a minute. But I want to start with this report from Jake Fisher of Bleacher Report, who said that the Heat are prioritizing a trade for Kevin Durant over a trade for Donovan Mitchell. Now, um, I hear you, Heat fans, that want Donovan Mitchell over Kevin Durant. I get it, okay? I get it. Donovan Mitchell is younger, right? He presumably keeps the, the window open for much longer. Kevin Durant is older, has the injury history and all these things. Donovan Mitchell has been sort of the guy that Heat fans have been wanting for a long time now, while Kevin Durant is sort of you know, newly on the trade block, you know, six months ago, we didn't think that Kevin Durant would be leaving Brooklyn, right? He just signed an extension prior to last season. So the idea of Durant hasn't been bouncing around the minds of Heat fans for a couple of years now, the way that it has with Donovan Mitchell. Now, I, so I understand where it is that you're coming from. If you're a Heat fan that would rather have Donovan Mitchell, and it's something that we've been talking about a lot on this show. Okay. A lot, a lot, a lot on this show. And uh, Jake Fisher's report lines up with a lot of what I've been saying on this show, that the Heat do prioritize Kevin Durant over Donovan Mitchell. And in fact, I would go so far as to say they believe they have a better chance at getting Kevin Durant than at getting Donovan Mitchell just because of how badly the Knicks want Donovan Mitchell and how much that they could potentially offer versus Kevin Durant deals between basically Miami, Phoenix, I, I don't know, name the team, it just doesn't seem like the market is as uh, robust with offers for Durant the way that they are for Donovan Mitchell for a lot of reasons, right? Do you, a lot of stuff recently coming out that it's not even Durant's injury history that's scaring off a lot of teams. It's mostly the fact that, hey, we don't know if we can keep this guy happy for a long time because he just seems supremely unhappy wherever it is that he ends up, whether it's Oklahoma City or Golden State or, or most recently in Brooklyn. So I get that. But this is not about what you want as a fan. If you're wanting Donovan Mitchell, if you are firmly entrenched in that camp, this is not about what you want. This is about what the Heat's front office wants. And let me try to take you inside that kind of the mind, the collective mind of that front office, okay? Because this is not a team that wants to just compete for the next six or seven years. This is not a team that wants to get back to the Eastern Conference Finals for the next several years. This is a team that wants to win its first championship in 10 years this coming season. They got close in the bubble two years ago. They were a shot away from making the NBA Finals this last year and believed that had they gotten there, could have beaten the Golden State Warriors. They believe that. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. They believe that. This is not a team that wants to get better. This is a team that wants to get over the hump, okay? This is a team that, based on all of its actions, letting P.J. Tucker walk, maintaining cap flexibility by, you know, uh, uh, staying out of the hard cap, staying out of the luxury tax, this is a team that knows, above all else, even more than a starting power forward, it needs another star next to Jimmy Butler. Another star. Donovan Mitchell is a really good player. He is not, and, and he's very marketable. And in that sense, yeah, he is probably a star from a marketing sense. If he ends up on the Knicks, he'll have one of the top five selling jerseys in the NBA within a week, I promise you. But Kevin Durant is one of the best 
10 players in the NBA right now by any stretch. You could argue he's one of the best two players in the NBA, and I certainly would. And I think the Heat believe that too. Is Donovan Mitchell that good? No. Can he become that good? Maybe. Kevin Durant is that good right now. And the Heat are only worried about right now. They are not trying to merely compete for the next six or seven years. That's what Donovan Mitchell would do. He would open up that quote-unquote window for the next six or seven years. That is true. Kevin Durant gets you over the hump. The Heat have been close. They need a guy that can get them over the hump. They need a guy who could be the best player on a championship team. Donovan Mitchell is really good. But I said this on yesterday's show. I think he's still the third best. If you add Donovan Mitchell right now to a team with Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo, I think he's the third best player on that team. That makes the Miami Heat better. It makes the Miami Heat better. Okay? But this is not a team just merely trying to get better. This is a team trying to get over the hump, trying to make that leap from, hey, cool conference finals team to bona fide finals threat, bona fide championship threat, okay? Donovan Mitchell makes you better. But I don't know that a Heat team with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Donovan Mitchell, and let's just say what, I don't know what it would cost, but let's just assume you have those three. Is that team better than Milwaukee? Healthy? No, because they don't have a player in the, in the same stratosphere as Giannis. Is that team better than Philadelphia? I don't know. I don't know. Is Joel Embiid healthy? Is James Harden in better playing shape? Is that team better than Boston? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Okay, Donovan Mitchell keeps you in that realm of top three or four in the Eastern Conference and with a with a real shot to make the Eastern Conference finals. And then at that point, who knows, right? Just because if you get down, I'm not arguing that if you get Donovan Mitchell, you can't win the finals. All I'm saying is that if you get Kevin Durant, your odds percentage of winning the championship is way better than it is with Donovan Mitchell. Okay, now, yeah, it's a short it's a short term window. That window is probably open for the next couple of years. But like I just said, the Heat aren't interested in just merely competing for six or seven years and keeping that window open for maybe four more years past Jimmy Butler's prime. That's not what they're wanting right now. That's not what Pat Riley is interested in. Pat Riley doesn't care about making the Eastern Conference Finals in 2028. He doesn't care about that. He cares about winning a championship right now. Right now. Add Kevin, add Kevin Durant to Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. That team is right there with Milwaukee. That team is better than Boston, and that team is better than Philadelphia. Adding Donovan Mitchell to the Miami Heat makes them better. That is for sure. But adding Kevin Durant to the Miami Heat, that makes them the best. And that's all this front office is worried about right now. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all of your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all of your sport wagering information. From live in-game betting, scores, and podcasts, they have you covered. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Starting July 18th, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Available July 18th on the Locked On NFL podcast, wherever you get podcasts, and on YouTube. All right, let's get to the latest here on Tyler Hero seeking. Uh, his extension, Jake Fisher, again from Bleacher Report, um, reporting that Tyler Hero is seeking a max extension. Now, uh, that lines up with everything that we've been hearing, that Tyler Hero is obviously going to seek as much money as possible with an extension. This extension, by the way, can be signed any time between right now and uh, the start, right before the start of the regular season in mid-October, Okay. So there's still a, a large window here for Miami and for the and Tyler Hero to get something done. Um, Jake Fisher reporting that you know the sense around the league is that the Heat will get something done. Now whether or not that's the max or not, 
that depends. But the, the, the key to this report is that league executives believe something will get done between the Heat and Tyler Hero. Now, the number that I've heard a lot of is something around four years, $100 million, an uh, annual average of $25 million a year for Tyler Hero. That, to me, seems fair. That, to me, seems right about where he should be. Bill Simmons re recently ranked Tyler Hero 50th on his trade value list. You kind of look at the names around him. They all, like Mikal Bridges, just sort of signed a four-year, not sort of, did sign a four-year $90 million deal. He's sort of right in that ranking. You look at uh, Seth Partnow's tiers rankings. Tyler Hero is sort of in, in that same zone of guys who have been getting that four-year uh, extension between 90 and 100 something million dollars. So I think that's right where Tyler should end up and will and will probably end up. The thing that's holding up this whole thing, when you see guys like Zion Williamson and these other players signing their extensions right uh, earlier in the offseason, is that Tyler Hero remains a player who could be dealt in a potential Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell trade. And if you sign Tyler Hero to this extension, you create what's called a poison pill in the contract. And what that means is that um, the Heat sending out Tyler Hero, they would be sending out his current salary at whatever it is, six, seven, eight million dollars, and the team acquiring him would be basically bringing in, for, for when we're talking about salary cap matching purposes, um, his value coming in would be the average the annual average of his of his extension, which would be again, if it's around this four year hundred million dollar mark, something around twenty five million dollars, that just makes the 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 matching of the money in a trade really really difficult. And so players uh, who sign extensions going into a season, those players are just extremely hard to trade because of that poison pill provision. Okay, and the reason that that exists is because that is almost a protection uh, for teams to sign their rookies, the rookies that they presumably drafted to extensions and, and get them, you know, through seven or eight years of, of their first uh, seven or eight years of their career. So that's sort of the protection that teams get under the CBA. And it makes it just extremely difficult to, for the Heat to sign Tyler here to an extension now and then include him in a deal for Kevin Durant or Donovan Mitchell. Now, just because they have not signed him to that extension yet doesn't mean... That Tyler Hero is for sure getting traded either. I just think that right now, the Heat are keeping their options open. And yeah, again, you've seen guys like Zion and some other players sign their extensions early in the offseason. That's usually done. Um, you know, sometimes it's done earlier in the offseason, but a lot of times these things are just, they just happen right before the regular season starts. And the only reason for that is, you know, you get the season over with. Teams are mostly uh, worried about the draft, so you're, they're, they're focused on the draft, and then as soon as the draft ends, you're looking at NBA free agency, and okay, you're trying to negotiate contracts with free agents, your own free agents, and all these things. I mean, the guys who are under contract are not usually the top priority, right? And so if you're the Heat, you're dealing with the P.J. Tucker thing. Before that, you're dealing with the draft. You're Right now, you're dealing with, okay, who are, are, are we going to be able to trade for Kevin Durant? Are we going to be able to trade for Donovan Mitchell? That's what your priority right now is. Meanwhile... You know, players, Tyler Hero, other players, they're on vacation during the offseason, right? They're out and about doing their own thing. They're enjoying their holidays. They're enjoying their vacations. They're doing that kind of stuff. And so that's why these things usually get done closer to the start of training camp and the start of the regular season, just because, okay, all these things are, uh, all these other things are happening. And then right when the, and right before the regular season is about to start, everybody sort of comes home, gets back to work, gets back into the office, and then you can iron this stuff out. So, that's the latest on Tyler Hero. Another note that I thought was pretty interesting, that Tyler Hero during Las Vegas was at the 2K party, uh, was talking with some reporters, and said that uh, he basically revealed his own 2K rating. They asked him, he said he was an 84, which I think is a really good rating for Tyler Hero. Uh, I'm not like a, a, a 2K player, but I do like to keep track of the ratings because I'm just interested in that stuff. I don't even have like a new gen or a next gen console, whatever we call it now. I don't have any of that stuff. I don't have it online. I'm not, I haven't played 2K in a few years now, um, but an 84 for Tyler Hero makes sense. But then he said he wants to be an 88 or a 90 uh, by the end of the regular season. So he wasn't really happy with that 84 rating. He seemed content with it. He wasn't, like, pissed. But, um, yeah, I think he wants to be better than an 84. He said he wants to be an 88 or a 90 by the end of the season. That puts him, like, squarely in, like, Zach Levine, Trey Young territory. Okay? Trey Young, noticeable name, wants to be part of that group.
right? That's what Tyler Hero said. We remember that. Okay, good. Uh, but if you can get into that sort of Zach Levine category, that's a guy who is sort of peren- perennially in the all-star conversation, gets a bunch of all-star votes, big market in Chicago. If Tyler Hero can get to that level, um, he would be right there. Big market. He would, good name, market, uh, marketable kind of face, name, swagger, all that kind of stuff. You could see him kind of getting those all-star votes a lot. The first step to doing that, though, is to be a starter. So if he's going to be an 88 or a 90 by the end of the regular season, he needs to be in, in 2K, obviously, because these ratings aren't real-life things. He needs to be playing like an 88 or a 90 on a 2K rating in training camp so that he can go ahead and win a starting spot for the Miami Heat because I think it's going to take that kind of performance in training camp, that kind of leap between now and then to cement a spot in the starting lineup because there's a lot of other things. I mean, him as a sixth man is incredibly valuable. He is the most valuable sixth man in the NBA. He just won that award. That is an, that is an incredibly valuable thing for a team to have. It's hard to just sort of say, you know what? We have the best in the league at this being sixth man. Let's move him into the starting lineup where he's maybe an above average starting shooting guard. He can't just be an above-average shooting, starting shooting guard. He has to be right there in that Zach Levine kind of category type of shooting guard for, I think, the Heat to feel like it's warranted to move him from his bench role where he is a star to a starting role where they're not sure what it would look like because he does have limitations as a playmaker. There's major limitations defensively. But if he can take a leap offensively, because I just don't think that that leap defensively is going to come just yet. He still needs to fill out his frame, all these things. I think that's going to come with more time than just one more summer. But if he can take another leap offensively and be so good offensively the way that a guy like Zach Levine is, where it counteracts all that stuff, the, the minuses defensively, that's where that major leap needs to come right now for Tyler Hero. So yeah, if he wants to be an 88 or a 90, if he wants to be in the same conversation with those guys sooner rather than later, he's going to have to take that leap and he's going to have to win that starting job in training camp because I don't care who what what 2K does uh, or what Tyler Hero does, if he's not starting, 2K is not giving a, a bench player a rating of 88. That's just not going to happen. Locked on Heat. Follow us on Twitter at Locked on Heat. On Instagram at Locked on Heat. Uh, email us, Locked on Heat at gmail.com. Send us questions on Twitter using the hashtag Ask L-O Heat. Uh, thanks so much for all the comments that we got um, in response to our uh, all-time Heat acquisition rain- rankings, uh, we had LeBron James is obviously number one. And then we did a hypothetical of where would Kevin Durant rank if the Heat were to get Kevin Durant among the all-time acquisitions in Heat history. And then ditto for Donovan Mitchell. A lot of responses, a lot of arguments, a lot of people disagreeing with what we came up with. Um, you could check out the graphic on Instagram, Locked on Heat, on Twitter, at Locked on Heat. Um, and then you can join the comments on our YouTube uh, channel uh, under the under the uh, in the comment section under the video uh, where we talked about all that stuff yesterday. So uh, that was in part two of our mailbag. We did a two part mailbag earlier this week. Go ahead and check all that out for stuff on Kyle Lowry, Kevin Durant, Donovan Mitchell, Tyler Hero, starting power forwards and all that kind of stuff. Speaking of starting power forwards, uh, Molter reports um, on Tuesday saying that Jamichael Green will be waived by the Oklahoma City Thunder, and he will sign with the Golden State Warriors. Now, I can already hear that collective groan from Miami Heat fans. Why couldn't we have gotten this guy? He would have been a perfect fit at power forward based on what's left out there, right? And he would have been. If you could have gotten him on the minimum, which presumably the Warriors are, uh, Jermichael Green, 32 years old, 36% career three-point shooter, actually even a little bit better than that, um, gets it done from the corners, has experience in the playoffs playing for in high stake situations for the Clippers, the Nuggets, whatever. He's going to have that experience now going forward with the Warriors. Um, would have been a great fit, but here's the problem. The Heat are just locked into this roster the way it is because they have figured out a way to be just a hair below the luxury tax. They have not hard capped themselves, but they are a hair below the luxury tax, and that's where they want to stay. All right. They have a roster spot available, even if you include. Udonis Haslam is the 14th guy, and he is not officially signed yet. But if if you include his veteran minimum, the Heat will be 14 players and just a hair below the luxury tax. Um, this is the problem with the way the Heat 
sort of approach the offseason. I'm not bashing it. I'm not saying that they are wrong, but this is a symptom of, of what it is they did and how it is that they did it. And I'll explain a little bit, but I did talk about it on yesterday's show. We discussed in the mailbag, if we could redo Miami's offseason, what would we do differently? And one of the things I said is I would reevaluate the Dwayne Dedman contract, which for the record, and it's out there, I said this at the time, I liked it a lot when they when they signed him to sort of a bloated contract. The, just a little background on this. The Miami Heat had bird rights on Dwayne Dedman, so they could technically sign him for anything between the minimum and the maximum contract. Obviously, they were not going to sign him at the max. That would be ridiculous. But they said, you know what? We have an opportunity to create a little bit of a, a interesting cap slot here for us. So rather than just sign him at something around $2 million at the veteran minimum, let's overpay. Let's give him $4-plus million a year. Uh, for two years, second year is going to be non-guaranteed, so it keeps us uh, dry on that end if we need to be. But uh, in the me- in the short term, we now have a stackable salary that's much more you know valuable in a potential trade than just the veteran minimum. This salary can help us get to something closer to a maximum salary by the trade deadline. So that's why they did that with Dwayne Dedman because they just don't have a ton of of kind of chunky contracts that they could put together in a trade. Most of their contracts are like these $1.8 million Max Struess gave Vincent Omer Yurtsevin contracts. They needed a few more chunkier type of deals. And by signing Deadman to a $4-plus plus million uh, deal, they got one of those. And then this ditto with Victor Oladipo. They did the same thing, overpaid for Victor Oladipo, so that they could potentially trade him down the line. Um, not to say that they were going to, but that option remains available. And as we've discussed, Miami's top priority and probably only priority at this point based on how they've sort of boxed themselves in, is getting another superstar player, all right? So had you not signed Dwayne Dedman to that bloated contract, you would have still had room under the luxury tax to go ahead and sign Jermichael Green to the minimum, all right? You could have signed Dwayne Dedman to just a regular minimum and then also Jermichael Green to a regular minimum. But because they signed Dedman to that bloated contract for trading purposes down the line, they just don't have room under the luxury tax. Now, the other thing that they could do is say, you know what? Screw the luxury tax. Let's just go ahead and get a starting caliber power forward in Jermichael Green. Now, Jermichael Green's good, but he's really inconsistent. He's, but he's probably still better than whatever option the Heat have now. Caleb Martin is not a four. He might have to play the four next year. Haywood Highsmith, coming from basically the fringes of the NBA, he's going to have an opportunity to win the starting power forward job this coming season, which just sort of tells you how dire straits the Heat are in at that position right now. Um, Jermichael Green would have been the leader in the clubhouse to start there. Again, not a perfect solution, not as good as P.J. Tucker, but would have been a better option than what the Heat have now, or at least another option to what the Heat have now. And so uh, the fact that they couldn't get something done, I understand why Heat fans are sort of moaning the fact that they couldn't get Jermichael Green while the Warriors just scoop him up for nothing, and they're able to replenish their bench with after Bielitsa goes overseas and they lose Otto Porter to Toronto and all these other things. Um, it's just... This is the position the Heat are in. This is the position they chose to be in. They don't want to be in the luxury tax. Yeah, they could have went over the luxury tax to sign Jermichael Green, but when you start counting in what that luxury tax is, obviously they don't feel like it's worth it, and obviously they are planning on being in the luxury tax next year, which would start the clock on the really punitive uh, repeater tax. And this is a team that if the Tyler Hero extension kicks in, and all, or if and or... If they get another superstar contract, okay, this is a team that will be in the luxury tax for a few years going forward. So this is sort of their last chance to stay out of the luxury tax. So that's the reason why. So the luxury tax thing isn't just Mickey Harrison being cheap, even though it is a little bit. Um, But staying out of luxury tax is just another sign that above all else, the Heat are prioritizing getting another superstar next to Jimmy Butler. If that means letting P.J. Tucker walk, if that means not being in the mix for Jermichael Green or whatever the next Jermichael Green might be, that's what this means. This team right now is desperate and focused solely on acquiring Kevin Durant and maybe Donovan Mitchell. But Kevin Durant right now is a number one priority, and everything they have done this offseason reflects that. That'll do it for us today. Remember to like and subscribe to Locked on Eat on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. Comment and leave a five-star rating. Reach us on Twitter at Locked on Heat. Thank you for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, get up to date on the latest news and rumors in the NBA in just 30 minutes every day with Locked on NBA. Locked on NBA, your daily NBA update in just 30 minutes.